first words that comes to mind when I see the Provo Temple have to be ugly. I mean, I mean, just take a look at it. It's off-white. It's circular. It's really round, um, and just, just completely unattractive. Now, some of you may be thinking, how dare she speak about the temple like that? Yet, how different is this really from what we say, from what you say, when you look in the mirror every day? Know ye not that your body is the temple of God? Don't you know? It's true. Your body's imperfect. So is mine. Yet we as a society have embraced the demeaning practice of finding fault with our bodies. And the consequences for this kind of thinking are very serious. One of the most prevalent um, effects is the growing number of eating disorders. Eating disorders are the most deadly of all mental health illnesses. And currently, there are 10 million Americans suffering from eating disorders. For some, this will prove fatal. Now, 10 million is too big of a number for me to wrap my mind around. So think of it like this. The Marriott Center, when it's completely full, holds a little less than 23,000 people. Imagine 400 Marriott Centers filled to their maximum capacity, and that's how many Americans are suffering from eating disorders. While this number is enormous, even it doesn't paint the whole picture. <coughs> many don't meet the specific criteria for an eating disorder, but it's estimated that one-third of college-age women are suffering from, or are practicing disordered eating habits, such as using laxatives, diuretics, diet pills, binging, or just not eating at all, just to try and lose weight. Unfortunately, BYU is no different from any other campus. Our numbers are the same. What does that mean? Well, look around you. That's roughly 30 women in this room. Is it you? Is it the person next to you? Regardless, we're each impacted. For me, this hit home just a few years ago. One of my greatest role models has always been my big sister. She's athletic, musical, spiritual, kind, and just an all-around beautiful person. But I started noticing some changes in her, some very negative and disturbing changes. Her portions at dinner started getting smaller and smaller, and her runs and the intensity of her workout was getting longer. She was obsessed with losing the imaginary pounds she didn't even have. She would immediately dismiss any image about, any compliment to her image. And before I knew it, my big sister was much smaller than me. Now fortunately for my sister, she was able to get the help and the treatment that she needed. My parents intervened and were able to, she was able to get it under control and she's doing much better now. But eating disorders never completely go away. They're never completely gone. The frightening thing is once I recognized these symptoms in my sister, I began seeing them everywhere I went. In my friends, my leaders, even in myself. And like a wildfire, these thoughts can grow out of control faster than we realize. Whether you're a football player, a dancer, a model, or just an average BYU student, we're each vulnerable. You can't even buy your groceries without being bombarded by a photoshopped image of the perfect body that you can never quite see when you look in the mirror. So what, what can we do about it? Is there anything we can do? Well, President Hinckley suggests, he, he counsels us to turn from the negativism that so permeates our society and look for the remarkable good, that we speak more of one another's virtues than we speak of one another's faults. Perhaps the words that carry the most weight are those we say while looking in the mirror. Whether you're shaving your face or brushing your hair, each of us looks in the mirror every day. What do you see? What do you say? Do you focus on your faults or do you praise your virtues? Do you see the temple? It's time, it's time for us to abandon the belittling, self-destructive words that drive us towards eating disorders. 
Replace them with words of acceptance and encouragement and respect. What do I really think of the Provo Temple? I think it's beautiful, inside and out. So next time you look in the mirror, remember, you are a masterpiece created by the master.